Okay, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a fantastic one. I'm here in the studio just doing a little bit of work on our secondary server. After that 45 drives tech video a couple of weeks ago, I had lots of people ask lots of questions at the top of those questions. Well, why don't you use a cloud based storage service? It, the first answer that comes to mind for that is because in order to do that, we would need to have an absolutely massive internet connection. Like it would have to be one gigabit per second, at least, or, or ideally 10 gigabit per second. Otherwise it would just be impossible to edit video off it. And also the cost um, of cloud storage when you compare it over the lifetime of having the drives. It's actually not super cheap when you're talking about the level of storage that we use and we would have to pay per gigabyte. So it would back up pretty quickly. Um, the other thing that people asked was what we were going to be doing in terms of backup. And that is this server that I'm sitting behind. We're going to be working on that in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be set up to be identical in terms of operating system to the 45 drives server that we recently, uh, recently got. But instead of backing up absolutely everything, it's going to basically just back up the source files. And because we're not going to edit video off of it, it doesn't have to have the same kind of performance capabilities as our Storinator. So that's what's in front of me here. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is the problems that seem to exist at certain automakers when it comes to opinions and policies and outlook on various parts of the automotive industry. This week, BMW unveiled a whole new strategy for its electrification. It's pushed forward its plans to bring 25 new electrified models to market by 2025. It's pushed that forward to 2023 and it's unveiled some new concept vehicles as well as a test mule, very high power test mule. It's promised a plug-in hybrid M series vehicle and potentially even an all electric model at some point in the future. And from the event that it held this week, you'd think that BMW was all in on electrification. And I think for the most part it is. However, shortly after that event, some news sites ran stories saying BMW is against EVs. They're not interested in developing batteries. So they're against EVs. They're not interested in EVs. And they say people aren't going to buy them and they're not interested in EVs because BMW is saying diesel has 20 years left and petrol has 30. And it kind of got me thinking about whether there is an issue, A, with how we report the news from an automaker. And secondly, corporate opinions versus personal opinions. So I think one of the challenges um, as a reporter is that when an auto company says something, you have to take that at face value. If it's publicly stated, you have to kind of take that at face value. And yeah, you do have to do some investigation and make sure that what that company is saying is actually what's happening. But at the same point, I think companies very often fail to get all of their executives on the same page. We've seen it before with pretty much every automaker out there. There, obviously, there is only one exception I can think of, and that's Tesla. And that's partly because Elon Musk is the guy in charge and what he says happens. But Tesla is nowhere near as big as some of these other big automakers with much more complicated management structures and much more complicated um, board structures. And so I think what happened this week is that, you know, different people at BMW have different opinions about the electrification plans moving forwards. And I think they're just being very public about their dissent in the way that BMW is pushing forward with its electric vehicle plans. Does that mean that BMW is against electric vehicles? No, I don't think it is. I think it just means that um, while presumably the majority of the board are pushing for electrification, there are still people at the company who remain to be convinced or who feel that um, they need to, to voice their dissent publicly. And it got me thinking, you know, is that something that automakers need to work harder on? And when uh, an auto executive states something that seems out of line with official company policy, does that necessarily mean that that company is completely uh, lying about what it had said publicly? Is it proving that that company is, you know, stuck in some kind of conspiracy to um, to 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 confuse people and buyers and to greenwash 
with press releases that, that are never going to come to fruition. So I'm interested to see what you think and what your approach to that is in the comments below and how can news outlets like Transport Evolved try and cover that in a fair and unbiased way. Because I feel that if we just say, oh, this company is against EVs because this ex single executive said this thing, while the rest of the company is saying, no, we, we really want electric to happen, then that's a bit disingenuous, don't you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support us and help us make more shows, please do consider donating through Patreon every month. We are working on some brand new Patreon perks, which Erin has sworn me to secrecy on, but I can tell you they're going to be good. They're, they're going to be really, really good. And that's going to be coming online in the next couple of weeks. And so if you join Patreon, you are going to get some new perks very, very soon. You can also send us money through Ko-fi. If you don't like Patreon, I know not everybody does, um, send us some money through Ko-fi. And uh, as a side note to the whole Patreon thing, a lot of people in Europe are upset because Patreon makes them pay VAT. And I just want to reiterate here, it's not Patreon's fault. The reason why we use Patreon, in fact, is because it collects VAT, because if we didn't collect VAT, if it didn't collect VAT on the donations, then we would be liable as a company to collect VAT. And then we'd have to report our income to everybody. Patreon takes care of that for us. So actually by supporting us through Patreon, you're helping us both in terms of accounting and also not getting in trouble with the European governments by not, you know, charging taxes when we should have done. So um, that's that. And of course, if you want to buy some swag, there is some swag in the swag shop. We're also going to be working on some new designs and some new things. Erin um, and I are very, very eager to switch some of our designs and some of our products away from brand new like cotton shirts, try and maybe do some recycled products um, and maybe also do some products that will help you live a lower carbon lifestyle. Thanks for watching. As always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.